that messy middle is uh, after you have resigned and we're now communicating with patients and now we're navigating, um, sharing with them uh, everything they need to know about what's going to happen moving forward. Every office experiences something that I come to call the messy middle. Uh, patients will have questions. Uh, you'll get some pushback from some patients. Uh, some uh, won't have any questions at all. Some patients will simply say, hey, I really appreciate you guys. I understand why you're doing this and I'm on board. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Um, but it's important to be prepared uh, for, for that messy middle. And one of the things we found um, is that if you can talk to as many patients as possible in a face-to-face -face environment, you're going to be more successful navigating this messy middle. Uh, where offices uh, really struggle with this is they kind of give up on talking to people and they think, well, if I just send a, a, a letter, then I can communicate in mass to everyone. And that's really wrong headed thinking here. Certainly it's more convenient to send a letter. Uh, however, when you send a letter, experts in linguistics will tell you that only 7% of a message is composed of the words that you're using. The other 93% is everything else. Tone of voice, inflection, uh, volume, uh, body language. Um, all the other factors make up 93% of delivering a message. And when you send a letter, um, you only get 7% of the value of that communication. And that's if they read the letter, if they read the letter. Now think about it. Um, when you send a letter, you can send it by email. Not everybody, uh, everybody has an email likely, but not everybody pays attention to their email, especially if they're not used to getting one from you. Uh, and if they're not used to getting an email from you, it may end up inadvertently in their junk inbox, uh, which of course they're likely not to read it there. Uh, so many offices will send an email, uh, but then also send physical snail mail letter. Um, but again, snail mail is not uh, foolproof. Um, many people uh, have reduced the mail uh, that they get to the point where they really don't pay much attention to their mail, unless it's a bill, unless it's someone that they routinely get correspondence from. Uh, people don't pay much attention to it. Another issue with sending the letter is it's a one-way street, meaning that the, the recipient can't reply back to you and can't communicate back to you. Um, another reason why the letter is, is a less effective medium. We're, I still recommend we send a letter, but we want to talk to first, we want to talk to as many patients as you can, uh, face to face. And we've talked about that in past episodes is calling the heads up conversation, you know, let people know what's happening, let them know why you're doing this, uh, let them know that they can still, we're still going to be very patient friendly. They can still come to your office for their care. They can choose your office for their care, whatever benefits they have uh, with their PPO plan, they can use in your office. You're still going to file their claim form like you always have. Um, and you're going to be on their side to help them get every dollar of benefit. Um, and patients will have questions. And we found that um, over time, um, your team member, you and your team members, um, develop um, a skill set around handling the frequently asked questions. Remember, certain patients won't have, a, depending on their personality type, uh, won't have many questions. Um, if you've been uh, following us on the DISC personality styles, the DISC DISC personality styles, uh, the Ds and the Is won't have many questions. They're simply going to want to know. Um, hey, can I still come to your office? Can I use my benefits here? And will you file my claims for me? And the answers to those questions are yes, yes, and yes. The S's and C's, by virtue of them being more dominant on the left side of their brain, uh, the more analytical side, will have more questions. Uh, the S's, the undercurrent of the S's, uh, is they'll have questions, but they're really looking for a reason to stay. Remember, the, uh, the S's are the really uh, amiable people, the lovable people. Um, the easygoing ones, um, the ones that value connection. Um, so they'll have questions, um, but uh, they are looking for a reason to say yes. The C's will have all the questions because that's just how their mind works. Um, it's not a, 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 a conscious decision they make. Um, they don't wake up thinking, okay, I'm going to ask as many questions as I can. However, it's just in their DNA. Um, and uh, when it comes to the C's, uh, it would be wise to assign the person in your office that has the most insurance information uh, to deal with the C's. 
uh, because it may take all of that horsepower to answer their questions.